Uh, I promise everybody to have some tutorials using LED lightings and today will be the first one on how to utilize bicolor lights to achieve this effect here where the subject is littered, white light looks like white light and the background changes to blue and the thing is bicolor lights give you that flexibility to do it and let's see how this can be done using such LED lights. I'm Richard and welcome to Zephy Productions and as I said, today will be a tutorial on using LED lightings to achieve this shot here. Now this shot is of course with Ryuki, she is cosplaying Akali from KDA and we wanted a more modern futuristic look so the background should be bluish while she will be white. Now the thing is, let me show you how the shot look like without any edits and how the sky look like at 5600k. Now, in our mind, most cities look blue, but that's not always the case. And in Singapore's case, a lot of the lightings used naturally are slightly warm. The city lights, the lamp lights, the building fixtures are either daylight, 5600K, or warmer, maybe 5000K or even 4000K. So, if you look at this shot here at 5600K, I don't think that's the color that you want. Now, if you use flash to hit the subject now, what you'll get is 5600K and you'll get this ugly background which you don't want. So how do you do it, right? Now in the past, what you can do is of course, uh, you know, just lower your Kelvin as low as possible in your digital camera and then start gelling your lights. Now gelling your lights are simple, but that's assuming that you can gel it to the color that you want precisely. Because there is so many variants of warm lights, some are 4.2K, 3K, 5k depends on your city color right so in this very case in fact this very shot with akali i had to go as low as 2.7k which is actually beyond a standard cto gel now once it goes beyond cto gel what can you do you can actually start stacking gels but that will be very detrimental in terms of power and in terms of color accuracy making your edit on the human skin terrible and this is where bicolor lights will stand out. Now, both of these lights are bicolor and it gives you that effect. So let me show you one of these lights. This is the Aperture 300X. Very, very powerful light, 300 watt. So let me change the color temperature. You can obviously start seeing it change color. Same thing, this is the Forza. This is the light that I actually use for the photo shoot itself. And let me show you the color change. So the good thing of bicolor lights is that they are very accurate when they are in either end of the spectrum. And in the middle, it depends. Sometimes they, normally they lose accuracy. And not only that, for LED lightings in particular, when they are in tungsten or warmer color, they are even more accurate for whatever reason. I think it's the way it's designed. But LED lights seem to you know, exhibit that kind of behavior where when it's closer to tungsten, 3.2K or lower, it's actually slightly more accurate than it is at 5.6K. So it makes good chance to use for this uh, particular shot here. So I lower my light, my Forza 60B to 2.7K and I get this effect where the subject is white light and the background is blue light. Now you may be wondering, now you can obviously gel it, right? But the thing is, if I ask you, in the real world, are you going to spend time wrecking? And then after you wreck it, are you going to spend time bringing your model down to do a test shoot first to know what kind of uh, lighting fit her? How sure are you at 3.2K is great? Or is it 3.8K? Or is it 3.2K? Or is it 2.7K? Or is it 3.6K? We do not know. The fact is, LED lights give you so much flexibility, especially bicolor lights, because they can be brought to the scene and tweaked accordingly. Now, what I've shown you today is, of course, changing the background blue, but you can actually do the reverse, changing the background extremely orange by changing how you light on a subject. So if the background is 5K, you if you want the background to be even more orange for whatever reason, you can use bicolor lights like this, which go from 2.7K to 6,500. You can set that at 6500 to give a really more cool, cloudy day white light. And when you shine it on a subject, what will happen is the subject will be cooler. And then you can warm up the temperature around while still maintaining this very nice white 
whitish skin tone on the subject itself rather than a bluish skin tone or orange skin tone that is not desirable at times. So this is the good part of LED lighting. And really, I just want to show you this short little tip on how to use by color lights to get the effect you want. Now, for that particular shot, of course, you have to use something like the spot projector to get the effect of the slitted light. And then probably you need one more light behind the subject to give you this very nice outline and glow. By the way, the outline and glow light, the one that is on the hair light one, that is at 5600K. So it gets very blue when once you set this at 2.7K. By the way, in Singapore, our skyline is not blue in any way. As I said, at 5,000k, it looks red orange. In fact, at 4k, it still looks slightly warmish, whitish, really weird color. Only when you drop it to about 2.7k does it look actually blue. At 3.2k, it is still not blue enough. So that is something that you must note and different cities vary differently but with bi-color lights, you don't need to worry. You just bring the lights out in the field and then tweak them accordingly to your situation itself and it solves all your problems on set. So now you can have a more guaranteed output by looking at what's happening on the LCD and getting the effect you want. As I said, it goes both ways. You can change the background blue by making them warm and you can do the reverse by making the subject cool to make the background warm. Now, one thing to note, bi color lights are not very, very powerful. In fact, as I said earlier in my previous LED light video, even this Aperture 3K can be overpowered by a speed light easily. So a speed light is way more powerful than them. The only advantage of them is that they go really low in power, up down to 1%, and they go, when max power, they get a very constant bright light that's easy for focusing, right? Now, if you're not going to use softbox, you're going to use hard modifiers like it's like this, you know, spot projectors or fernels, then this light is perfectly fine. Uh, 60 watt light is perfectly fine even for night shoot. Uh, for day shoot, you can barely see the effect but it's there to feel the light. Now, if you want to use softbox, you will have to go for this really big and expensive and heavy model which is the Aperture 300X or the Nanlight 300B. Those, these two models in particular allows you to use bi-color with softbox in nighttime easily and you get enough power. And in daytime, softbox may not be able to, you know, show much effect but definitely at least it still feels the light to a certain extent. Now just to note that powering options wise this can be powered by a single V mount so it's very nice easy to carry out that's why I rec highly recommend you get this for the purpose of learning lighting especially for night photography. Well this one requires you to power with two batteries now you can power with one battery but it's running at half power and half power may not be enough for a softbox now, if you're going to do fuel light in daytime, definitely you need two batteries to run it all the way to 300 watts. But in nighttime, one battery, you probably can get away with it at maybe at 10% power or 20% power of this light. With a softbox, you probably can get away with it as long as you're not going very bright. Uh, one last thing to note is that uh, LED lights themselves are constant lights and they are very glaring to the subject. So even in that particular shot, it's very glaring and the subject cannot actually see my direction. So you have to shout or get a helper to help you try convey the message. That's about it for today. I hope you enjoy this and uh, teaching you how to use bi-color lights to change your environment colors. I think it's a very, very useful tool. And you know, before I got these lights, it uh, I think it can be done, as I said, it's just that unless I bring all sort of gels out and ready to take a hit in terms of power, ready to take a hit in terms of color accuracy, uh, there is that much you can do. With these lights, you can go to 2.7K and it's still really accurate and easy to edit compared to if you were to use flashes with gels. I mean, if you have used flashes with gel before, especially full CTO gels or full CTB gels, you will know what I mean by making it harder to edit because the amount of color there is just degraded slightly. Uh, now, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time in my next LED lighting or normal tutorial or even a review. Till then, I will see you again. Bye-bye.